So I've currently got four uh, USB SATA uh, options. Now this is an older one which I got from eBay, but it is the same Dyna mode as this one. This is the J Micron one that uh, tends to get bad press, but it's worked all right for me, although you sometimes need to uh, apply a little bit uh, of script to make it work. Uh, and this is probably the most reliable and the one I would recommend, uh, and I'll put a link in the description to it. Uh, it's, uh, it tends to work with pretty much everything, and it's nice and cheap as well, and it's good speeds. So people have been asking me about uh, UASP after Jeff Geerling did uh, he did a blog post and he also did a video on it. Uh, very interesting uh, in that he bought a uh, USB SATA device that actually didn't support the faster protocol, which has been around since 2014. So it's it's a little bit surprising that people are still selling them now. Uh, now I've tended to go for very cheap SATA drives. I got this quite a while ago, this one. Um, or no, not before 2014, and I've had it and used it, and uh, and it's been working fine for me. But I thought I'd do a test on all of them and see what it's like. So let's switch over to screen capture. Okay, so what you need to do is to plug in your USB device. So let's plug this one in first. This is the CSL adapter from Amazon. So let's close these bits down, open a terminal, and type in lsusb-t. So we're looking for mass storage. So if it says mass storage, that's the good bit. If it says USB storage, then it's running a slower protocol and, uh, and isn't as good. So we know this first one is all right. So let's eject that. And plug that in. So this is the J Micron one. Let's do the same thing again and mass storage has come up again. And both of these have come up on Amazon as having UASP, so I wasn't as worried uh, about those two, although these, to be fair, these have been working fast, so I think they will be all right as well. So let's unplug that one. And check out uh, Jeff Geerling's blog uh, if you want more information. I'm not gonna go into depth because he's done that and he's done a really good job on it. I just thought it was interesting to see what all the ones I had were uh, and all the ones I've been recommending. So this is the first Dynamode one. This is the one I got off eBay. Uh, I think I paid a fiver. Uh, so yeah, mass storage again. So that's good. And uh, so I'll just try the last one, even though they're actually different colors. You can see here, uh, and they, they do have, the circuit boards are slightly different. So I was a bit worried when I got this that it was gonna be a USB 2 one, but it has been given USB 3 speeds. Uh, and I double checked it and it did show up as a USB 3 device. Right, so let's eject that one. And plug this one in. Okay, that's detected the, the last one. And that's, and we've got, oh, hold on, we've got USB storage here. Well, that is interesting. Class equals mass storage, driver equals USB storage. So let's go back through those lists because here we can see, so class equals mass storage, driver equals USB storage. And then if we go up here, class equals mass storage, driver equals UAS. So if I go up, so class, so the first one I did was class equals mass storage, driver equals UAS. Second one, class equals mass storage, driver equals UAS. Third one was this one, class equals mass storage, driver equals UAS. But the fourth one, which is the one I've used for the longest time and done most videos about, uh, which would be, so this color Dyna mode one, it's got sort of more of a bluish hue to the circuit board, uh, that actually says class equals mass storage, driver equals USB storage. So this is slower. So I need to do a speed test on both of these uh, and see how much difference that makes to me. That's interesting. So I've got uh, Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit on this drive. I'm currently booting from a micro SD card. So I think what I'm gonna do, shut that down, boot it from this, do a speed test, and then try it with this one, which should be faster, which is pretty much an identical device, but is 
showing it as UAS. Interesting. I wasn't expecting that. So let's shut this down. Now I've actually just cut my nails recently so I can't get the SD card out with my nails. So I need to pop a little screwdriver in there and pop that out. Obviously be careful, don't plug your screwdriver into a Pi switched on. Uh, so let's unplug and plug in. So this is the one that uh, registered as USB boot. So this is the slower one uh, according to the blog. So you can see the USB starts up fine. So let's hit screen record on that. Okay, so let's do uh, Raspberry Pi diagnostics and have a look at that. Okay, so it comes up with a pass, show log, and uh, 85,743, 39,006. Let's do one more, the same test. Comes up with a pass, show log. So this is the second test on the right. Oh, much lower, look. 36,000, 4,342, and 3,202. Crikey, that's very different. Right, I'm gonna do a third test and show log. So oh, we're back up to the eight, 80s thousands here, like 86,000, 7,000. So this is the fastest. Oh, actually, that one's probably the best test overall. Uh, so I'll keep that. I'll keep the best test of the three. And let's copy that into a document. And I'll save that. So this first one is non-UASP. There you go, so let's shut that down and I'll reboot with the, what should be faster, adapter. And plug that in. Okay, so we're up and running. Accessories, diagnostics. Run tests, nice and fast. All oh, much quicker speeds, look. Sequential write speed is much, much quicker. Random write speed. Yeah, that's way better overall. That's interesting. So UASP, let's open that up. So this was the fastest speed with the non-UASP drive, and already it's just blown it away. So it's way, way faster. Yeah, completely different speeds. Right, let's do, uh, be, to be fair, let's do the three tests like we did with the other one. So we've also got, yeah, 21,000, 7,002, 10,000, right, so we're still faster on this one overall. And so let's go back to that test, where is it? This one, and reset and run test. Do the third test and then we'll save the best one of the three. That was really fast that time, wasn't it? So 22,000, let's, I can close that down. So 22,000, 14,000, 10,000, I think that's the fast one, fastest one. Yeah, so I'm gonna save the data from that. I've got the camera in the way, that's why I'm a bit awkward with the keyboard. So paste that in. So it's definitely right. It's, uh, it's very good information. So if you are buying a uh, USB to SATA cable, that's so weird, because I, I have had this for a long time, and I, I'd still say I'm getting decent speeds because uh, I'm using uh, cheap SSD drives uh, and they're definitely outperforming SD cards, but that has made a huge difference. So I won't really use this one anymore, um, apart from maybe using it for. Um, actually, I could keep my. I might just keep my RetroPie drive in it. I've got a 750 gig physical hard drive, so the speed difference isn't going to make a lot of difference to that. So I think I'll just permanently I'll screw that into one of these cases, uh, and then that will keep that drive nice and safe and then I'll use this one. Well, I mostly use this, to be fair, as a cable. Uh, it's, it tends to be the best in all the tests. And in fact, I had the results from my other video that was on this desktop, uh, which was this SATA SD test. But yeah, that is very interesting. So I'm glad I checked. I know now not to use this one uh, because it just isn't as good. All right, so thanks very much for watching. Thanks to Jeff Geerling for the great information and please like and subscribe.